guns are really useful in fighting against crime, but they can become dangerous when used for the wrong purposes. Hence, to make sure things are always under control, the Supreme Court just announced to change the CA gun laws. Let's find out why. Supreme Court justices made headlines with their landmark judgment as they just announced to change CA gun laws, which profoundly impacted various domains. A sense of excitement mixed with anxiety permeates the atmosphere amidst expectations of a landmark verdict impacting gun ownership limits and liberties. At the forefront of this groundbreaking change lies Rodi v. Banta, a judicial confrontation that embodies intricate legal tenets, pressing public safety considerations and profound chronological elements. For nearly four years now, California has remained steadfast in its stance against assault weapons through its comprehensive weapon prohibition. Implemented three decades ago, the prohibition targeted weapons with lethal potential for widespread harm, hoping to prevent tragic events. But the Supreme Court's recent ruling isn't simply a reactionary measure to violent incidents. Instead, it represents a thoughtful response to targeted perils confronting people and societies. Amid controversy lies the allocation of firearm components called braces. An approximation of 10 to 40 million such items exists, stoking heated debate regarding regulatory measures. A legal analysis, not a swift surrender to authority, explains the Supreme Court's stance on those regulations. Maintaining equilibrium between two vital interests, the judgment underscores that danger alone did not steer the verdict. At the core of Rodi v. Banta lies Prop 63's imposition on ammo sale restrictions. A prominent actor in the judicial arena, CRPA, asserts that these limitations breached constitutional protections. Tapping into the historic Heller case, they prioritize safeguarding personal liberties by harnessing the power of guns. A roller coaster of triumphs and disappointments has unfolded during CRPA's ongoing legal fight. After noticing encouraging results, the state actively fought against a gracious decision, causing a brief suspension of implementation. After Bruin, courtroom activity experienced a resurgence previously thought impossible. By this ruling, a firmer framework emerged for reviewing weapon rules, significantly complicating the regulatory landscape for states versus the earlier Heller opinion. Despite the prolonged nature of the Rody legal battle, the San Diego court seeks swift closure. A possible victory for CRPA will prompt another attempt at annulment from legal professionals, signifying the significance of the ongoing court battle. Inside the courtroom, unexpected developments transpire as the state demands extra hours to deliver additional data. Courts harbor doubts concerning the state's aptitude to generate new proof, thus instigating a short period, 30 days, within which supplementary claims may be proffered. CRPA's lawyers also possess a diverse array of tactics within their reach. In case of triumph, they may shed light on the lingering difficulties dealing with California's cartridge license procedure. Through their flexibility, judges maintain a compelling legal battle involving fresh evidence provided by the prosecution. One feature of recent judicial rulings catches the attention, the concentration on an individual's prior criminal acts influencing their constitutional right to carry firearms. Courts deliver the historical verdict. Nonviolent felons can regain the right to possess weapons. This transformation represents a break from traditional federal gun regulations illustrating the court's propensity to challenge the parameters of weapon ownership. The court's decision to recognize different threat levels posed by various felonies allows for more targeted restrictions while protecting fundamental rights. Moreover, age limits on firearm ownership were introduced concurrently. Under the constitutional interpretation by the court, the restriction against young adult firearm possession has been found invalid. Aging no longer serves as the sole determinant of someone's capacity for exercising gun rights responsibly. Age and maturity's relationship to gun rights generates debate. A groundbreaking Supreme Court verdict greatly enhances individual gun entitlements away from domestic constraints. This monumental judgment expanded the reach of the Second Amendment into areas outside residences. Enlarging the constitutional framework, creates opportunities for cases testing gun regulations throughout America. Despite being made with good intentions, they have faced opposition. Quarter after quarter, faces the brunt of legal action due to right-wing support. 
These decisions serve as an impetus for lower courts to assess existing gun control provisions afresh, resulting in varied and inconsistent legal standards throughout distinct regions. A comprehensive network of laws underscores the necessity for a unified and consistent framework regarding gun control measures, balancing personal freedoms with the urgent requirement for community security. Emerging perspectives regarding guns prompt legislative changes and spark innovative gun control measures. Blue states aim to align their legislation with the dynamic legal environment following the Supreme Court's recently established benchmark. This lively response reveals the intricate fusion of federal and state rules, not to mention the persistent communication amongst legal representatives and bench members. These decisions' consequences stretch far past legal boundaries and legislative actions. Proponents on both ends of the debate closely monitor court proceedings, with the future of gun control hanging precariously in the balance. The Fifth Circuit supported the Supreme Court's position in another significant simultaneous movement. Recent developments come after the landmark Bruin judgment, broadening gun rights beyond domestic settings. As the haze lifted, the appeals court issued a groundbreaking verdict, undoing earlier precedent and eradicating the statute that limited gun possession to selected persons. Throughout history, few moments stand out more than this as a testament to evolving attitudes toward guns under the, in an act reflecting the weight of these happenings. President Biden intervenes, opposing the verdict reached by the Fifth Circuit. Based on this logic, the administration argues that the appellate court's decision intensifies the threat level for those affected by home-based aggression. In agreement with the notion that folks governed by protective orders due to past home disturbances shouldn't hold weapons is the central point here. During such debates, striking a balance between defenseless populations and First Amendment privileges gains paramount importance. The monumental Bruin test implementation is key to this dramatic legal case, sparking stirrings among lawyers. Courts must assess if recent laws adhere to established understandings regarding the Second Amendment's historical intent. Legal specialists disagree on whether restricting arms ownership poses a bigger danger or presents an opportunity. Historical context complexity often hinders direct application to contemporary problems. Trial courts have observed an upsurge in lawsuits questioning different facets of federal gun control legislation. Philadelphia's Third Circuit Court of Appeals verdict has challenged age-old limitations on gun ownership for people who committed non-violent misdeeds. Disarmament was contingent upon the absence of past instances of such action against people accused of minor infractions. The increasing attention on examining federal firearm regulations highlights a change in judicial approach. One side holds strong opinions, but another presents equally persuasive arguments. Proponents and detractors alike have vigorously voiced their views about weapon management measures. The highlighting of Rahimi's case, amidst broader talks, receives extensive focus. Considered a benchmark by many, this situation will provide insight into the sweeping effects of Bruin. A successful court challenge hinges upon navigating intricately intertwined perspectives in the Supreme Court where justice coalitions deftly reconcile evolving social mores via constitutional deliberations. Surrounded by chaos, Judge Benitez steps forward as a key player. Each day, listeners grow more anxious about the pending justice outcome. Questions loom large. Will the court successfully integrate private liberty interests with communal welfare considerations? How long will the Bruin test serve as the gold standard in judging gun laws? Ultimately, how will these choices shape the lives of typical people? Benitez oversaw a dispute in which legal figures sought to shape how guns may be governed according to law, facilitating the introduction of more evidence and answers to concerns voiced previously. The jurist awarded both parties a judgment-related expansion. Pulling the core issues into focus are the fundamental concerns surrounding legal representation, witness credibility, and essential information related to court proceedings. The judge's instruction draws attention to California's responsibility to provide proof regarding those cleared via the weapon purchase screening process, yet remains disqualified from gun possession. Gun control's potency gains attention with this demand. The lack of action following background investigations makes one wonder about the point and effectiveness of these regulations. 
Using the hearing as a stage, they conducted thorough examinations and debates. During an engaging discussion, Judge Benitez confronted the Department of Justice regarding their use of antiquated and discriminatory laws. The court navigated current gun control debates by exploring the intricate connections between history, justice, and policy. Benitez's disappointment exemplifies the comprehensive nature of his review process. A cautious review of the arguments presented results from his skepticism towards historical and procedural justifications employed by the state. The judge remains vigilant to forestall grounds for objection in higher judicial bodies. Through this systematic process, he reinforces the arguments for upcoming appeals. Historical racism's reverberations and the matter of proper process magnify the significance of the choice before us. Judge Benitez's underlining of expert testimony and historic grounds holds paramount significance here. When examining the Second Amendment, a tangled network of legal issues emerges, demonstrating how its understanding entwines America's diverse heritage. Beyond the judicial setting, the implications grow profoundly evident with each passing moment. The legal ramifications of the Rodi Bonta case loom large, locally and nationally. Through the nuanced interaction between constitutional concerns, past events, and social welfare considerations, lies the complex essence of formulating firearm laws balancing personal liberties with community security. Subscribe to this channel for more stories about laws and crimes. California's recent gun law updates demonstrate how fragile the balance between civil liberty and communal security is. A reminder emerges that the judiciary is adaptable. With deliberations rooted in established protocol, historical guidelines, and constitutional principles, click on the video links popping up for more news about gun laws.